Given that cosine theta equals 9 elevenths and sine theta is less than zero, find sine theta and tangent of theta. Well, the first thing we need to do in, in solving a problem like this is determine in which of the four quadrants should we construct our triangle. And remember to do that, we had the acronym all students take calc. And it helps us pick the quadrant uh, in which the trig functions are positive. Uh, so first we have that sine theta is less than zero, means sine theta is negative. Well, if sine is negative, then it can't be in the first quadrant, because all trig functions are positive here. And it can't be in the second quadrant, because the S stands for sine. Sine is positive here. So this bit right here, sine is less than zero, narrows me down to the bottom two quadrants. Well, now I have uh, to deal with the, the cosine. It says that the cosine is 9 elevenths, and for right now, let's not worry about 9 elevenths and just worry about cosine being positive. Uh, so if cosine is positive, and we only have these two to choose from, uh, the C indicates the quadrant in which cosine is positive. So I'd throw out quadrant number three. This triangle is going to be in quadrant number four. So I like that. Okay, at this point we can label the sides of our triangle. Um, for the labeling say, purposes, we'll just use the fact that uh, cosine of an angle is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So that means the adjacent edge of this triangle is 9, the hypotenuse is 11. And to find the, the opposite side, we'll use Pythagorean's theorem. Uh, this side here would be the square root 11 squared minus 9 squared. Square root of 121 minus 81, which is the Let's see, it's the square root of 40, simplifying to 2 square root 10. And I made it negative because we're going down to get into the fourth quadrant. Okay, once the triangle is completely constructed, now we're finally ready to answer what was asked sine of theta is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse. So negative 2 square root of 10 over 11. And the tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, negative 2 square root of 10 over 9. Next question asks us to convert the angle 79 degrees, 26 minutes, 42 seconds from DMS to decimal degree form. And be sure how to set up the problem. The reason why I'm asking you to do this and to show your work is because I don't want it done just solely on the calculator. Uh, let me show you kind of how we could do that on the calculator. Uh, 79, and right here above the apps button it says angle. So I go into angle and I grab degrees. So 79 degrees, 26. I go back into angle and I grab minutes and then I want 42 seconds. The seconds you actually find right above the plus sign with the alpha key. And there's the kind of the quotation symbol. So, so there's my answer, 79.445. Let's show how to do that to actually set up the problem. So we want uh, 79 plus 26 minutes is the fraction 26 out of 60, 26 minutes out of 60 minutes, plus 42 seconds, 42 seconds out of 3,600 seconds. And now if I just type that in, 79 plus 26 sixtieths plus 42 divided by 3,600, and notice they're identical answers. So 79 
degrees. So I definitely want to see this on the test and I'll mark off uh, for not seeing it. Next problem says the wheel of a train engine turns 240 degrees as it moves a distance of 6.25 yards. What is the diameter of the wheel of the engine? Um, so maybe kind of diagram it to, to kind of help see it here. Okay, there's my wheel. I'm just gonna draw a line here. Uh, so what I want you to do is kind of envision that this wheel is going to rotate 240 degrees. Uh, 240 degrees would kind of be an angle a little more than two, a little less than 270. So be kind of like that. And what's going to happen is this wheel is going to rotate 240 degrees and as it does it moves a distance of 6.25 yards and it'll end over here okay so the question being asked then what's the diameter of the wheel of that engine um, well it's important to realize that the 6.25 what it is is it, as the circle rotates Onto, onto the ground here that the outer edge of the circle is landing on the ground. This 6.25 yards is an arc length. And so this is kind of like, this is an arc length problem. And so we have a formula that relates the arc length and the radius of a circle um, if the angle is given in degrees as it is here. And that formula is S S is the arc length. S equals pi times r times theta divided by 180. Now that would be the same. We're asking to find the diameter, which I can find through the r. If I know the r, I can just double it. So the r, solving for the r, I'd multiply the 180. So S times 180 divided by pi and the theta. And we're ready to plug in and compute this out. So the S is 6.25 times 180 divided by pi times the angle, which is 240. So let's do that here. And so it looks like about to two decimal places, 1.49. We'll just go with that. So r equals 1.49 yards. Now that's not the answer to the question. The question wants to know what is our diameter. So we know, of course, that one diameter is equal to twice the radius. So two times 1.49. And our diameter is... 2.98 yards. Next, from, from a 120 foot building, you sight a hot air balloon at an angle of 31 degrees elevation. Horizontal distance from the tower to the balloon, um, I guess that shouldn't say tower, it should say building. Um, from the building to the balloon is 550 feet. How high in the air is the balloon? Okay, so. I'm on, let's just kind of draw this out here. Here's, here's the ground. Here's my 120 foot building. And so then this is me here. And there is a hot air balloon. Let's see if I can draw. Yeah, there's my hot air balloon. And so let's see, at an angle of 31 degrees elevation from where I'm at, I spot that hot air balloon. And so there's my 31 degree angle of elevation. 
um, says from the the tower should be building to the balloon is 550 feet the horizontal distance so this is 550 feet um, how high is the balloon in the air well the right triangle that we have just drawn is right here from that right triangle we'll be able to find this height call it x and then we'll just need to add to that the 120 feet here and we'll have the height the balloon is in the air so let's see the x is on the opposite side the 550 is on the adjacent side so I can find the x with the tangent equation tangent of 31 degrees equals opposite x over adjacent 550 so x equals 550 times the tangent 31 degrees Okay, so if I do that here, 550 times the tangent of 31, we get x equals 330.5. We need to add the 120 feet to it, and we get 450.5 feet.